everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the SAMS and Ramadan virtual gathering. As so many of our members and supporters move through this blessed month, we're really excited to take a couple of moment, moments to connect virtually with you all and to reflect on the SAMS activities and all the medical relief work in Syria and beyond that's only possible through your support. I'm Dania Musa, and I'll be your moderator for this event. I'm a nurse and I've been volunteering with SAM since 2016. Today we'll hear from the SAMS Foundation Chair, Dr. Basil Dermamini, SAMS President, Dr. Amjad Ras, Dr. Bashir Tajaldian, the SAMS Turkey and Northwest Syria Senior Program Manager, and Dr. Ikram Habush, Director of the SAMS Idlib Maternity Hospital. In 2021, despite you know, COVID and all the precautions, SAMS provided more than 2.3 million medical services in eight countries, including Syria, Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Greece, and here in the USA. To learn more and support our work, please visit sams.usa.net. Dr. Dajaldin, can you please share some more on the SAMS programs in Northwest Syria? Thank you everyone for joining this uh, uh, evening. Uh, actually, during, uh, uh, as Daniel mentioned, during last year, uh, SAMS provided over than 2.3 million uh, uh, medical services to the affected uh, population. So when we are talking about Northwest Syria, uh, SAMS is considered one of the biggest healthcare providers in Northwest Syria to the people uh, uh, in need. Uh, Based on the evaluation of the healthy cluster, one uh, uh, among each five uh, uh, patients referring to uh, and seeking for the health care are referring to SAMS facilities. Uh, SAMS uh, is providing health care services through different levels, uh, starting from mobile clinic, PHCs, hospitals, general and specialized hospital, and many other uh, specialized services. Uh, through more than uh, 30 uh, uh, facilities. Uh, now SAMS is supporting about 35 uh, medical facilities, including 12 uh, hospitals, which are considered uh, among the uh, uh, main referral hospitals in uh, Northwest Syria, including uh, Babel Hawa Hospital, uh, which is uh, near the biggest uh, uh, collection of the IDBs living in uh, camps and informal settings. Uh, uh, many hospitals in Idlib city, including specialized hospital uh, uh, for pediatry and neonatology, the maternity hospital, the general hospital, uh, Idlib central hospital, which they are uh, the main referral hospital uh, there, in addition to uh, supporting Al Shifa Hospital in Afrin, which is considered the uh, only available hospital providing uh, free of charge service to uh, beneficiaries. Uh, in addition to a large network of uh, PHCs, uh, uh, mobile clinics, uh, SAMS played and still playing big role in the COVID response, especially in the case uh, uh, management uh, pillar. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, with the general support of uh, SAMS donors and also contribution from uh, private uh, donors, SAMS is uh, uh, serving uh, uh, the uh, patients with the chronic uh, 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 renal diseases, like uh, supporting dialysis uh, units and providing the medications to the uh, uh, patients with kidney, uh, kidney transplant. SAMS is also providing mental health site social support services uh, uh, in most of its supported facilities, in addition to uh, a specialized uh, uh, center providing mental health and psychosocial support, mm -hmm. in addition to the uh, physical rehabilitation. Uh, uh, some other critical uh, programs and uh, services are provided uh, uh, through SAMS, including the uh, ICU for adults, uh, neonates, and pediatric. Uh, Recently, SAMS started providing the cath lab services free of charge to the beneficiaries in addition to uh, starting the stroke unit. Uh, uh, honestly, SAMS now is accessing uh, every single district uh, uh, could be accessed uh, in Northwest Syria, including Idlib, uh, Aleppo, Al Hasaki, and Raqqa uh, uh, governorate. With, uh, with your support, we will uh, be able to 
continue covering uh, uh, many critical gaps that institutional donors uh, are not covering due to uh, the mandate and due to the uh, limitation of the funding. Thanks, Dr. Bashir. It's really nice to hear that Dan in the background. I think it's it's a good reminder that we're all here together to celebrate Ramadan and all the progress and all the lives Sam's has saved. Um, you know, since since Sam's was started, we're actually going to take it back to Dr. Uh, Termanini. Um, Dr. Termanini, can you share with us more about Sam's overall impact in the recent months? Sam's, uh, as you all know, is a non-religious non-political, that Sam's Foundation I'm talking about, which is where the medical relief is delivered to, the 501c3 charity organization, um, that the goal is delivering dignified quality healthcare services to people in need throughout the world, focusing mostly on Syria, which is the worst humanitarian crisis in our lifetime. So st- since 2011, Sam's Foundation have delivered more than 20 million services to people in need. The overwhelming majority were in Syria, but also in surrounding countries like Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, Greece, and even the USA and Bangladesh. Um, We have uh, delivered more than $300 million of humanitarian, mostly medical aid to those areas. And we are, uh, we pride ourselves about being very cost effective our overhead is, has been persistently less than 6% throughout the years. And our cost per patient care is uh, ranges between 10 to $12 year after year. Those services include ICU care, um, major uh, surgeries, deliveries, et cetera. It's, it's not just primary care. So we do have deliver a wide spectrum of services and they can be quite costly. Uh, average for international NGOs is usually in the hundreds of dollars, where our average is 10 to $12. And we are grateful for our volunteers, which they bring that cost down. They deliver a, a high quality, uh, experienced uh, medical care free of charge as volunteers. And we have tens, if not hundreds of those volunteers throughout the world. So um, our... Uh, Activities in 2011, as Dr. Bashir alluded to, was like we we delivered more than 2.3 million services. Uh, Around 2 million were inside Syria, but we also delivered refugee care, uh, mental health and physical therapy and missions to surrounding countries like uh, Jordan and Lebanon, which we have ongoing uh, missions. Uh, With the COVID, there was hiatus of two years where we couldn't do external missions, but we replaced all with internal missions from doctors in those countries. Uh, Those missions have just started, resumed in January to Jordan and now in May to Lebanon um, by Dr. Amar and Dr. Uh, Mufaddal. So we also, besides those surrounding countries, we have, uh, we deliver refugee uh, help help to um, in Greece, um, Syrian and Afghani refugees, all refugees uh, tend to uh, land in, in those Greek islands to take care of them with vaccinations. We also delivered uh, medical supplies to Gaza last year and some uh, PPEs to Tunisia and uh, India. So we're trying to be play a, a more of a global role where the needs are we're trying to help. Uh, definitely focusing uh, continuing to focus on Syria as the worst humanitarian crisis and also because of our uh, roots. The you know, majority of us as members and foundation are, you know, either were born or, you know, we have very close relationship to Syria. So in, in this Ramadan, I think we're going to, um, uh, we have several uh, new things just started recently. One of them is uh, the stroke program. There was no stroke unit throughout Northwestern Syria. And we are starting one in Idlib city, um, which is gonna be managed by uh, Dr. Maher Sakur. He is the head of the stroke uh, uh, program in Western uh, uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So he has great experience with the stroke program. We're also starting a fellowship program, part of our medical education in ICU. Uh, we started the cardiac cat for the first one of three um, of um, in Afrin, 
to be extended also to Idlib City and uh, uh, to Albab. So we're going to have eventually three cath labs. Um, and we are expanding our neonatology uh, ICU uh, in uh, Ibn Sina Hospital in Idlib City. Uh, we're starting a cochlear implant, a, a very uh, important cochlear implant for congenital hearing defects in Northwestern Syria, which uh, currently is not available. Um, those unfortunate children have to travel to Turkey or look for private funding to get those cochlear implants. So those are the highlights of what we're doing just in Ramadan, this Ramadan. Um, we also, you know, doing some work in Ukraine, which we can talk about that later on. So I think uh, your donations will definitely help us continue to uh, operate those very important uh, life-saving programs in Idlib in Northwestern Syria and Northeast Syria, where we do have a large COVID hospital near Deir Zor. Um, we also are going to expand our maternity and pediatric units. We have three large uh, maternity hospitals in Northwest Syria. And we have a, the largest uh, pediatric hospital in Idlib City, Ibn Sina, which is a referral center. We also can continue to expand our cardiac cath program, our stroke unit, our oncology center for those unfortunate patients. Thank you so much, Dr. Bassett, for sharing some highlights of you know, Sam's overall impact in the recent months. I started off my career in healthcare, um, and a lot of it was influenced by my work with Sam's. I was a translator while I was in nursing school. Um, I went on you know, almost five missions with Sam's over the last couple of years, and that has really influenced you know, my career, career path and everything that I love and love doing in healthcare. So we're actually going to take it over and we're going to share a special video that we have for Ramadan. Sam's and the staff here at the Aleman Hospital to help the Syrian refugee population that has been devastated by uh, facial injuries due to war. So far in two days, we have screened between 65 and 70 patients. We have already performed 11 surgeries and at the end of the week, we'll probably have performed between 25 and 30 procedures. الوقت اللي أنا كنت عم شوف ابني عم يتراجع بالمهارات أنا ما عندي أسلوب إنه أنا لا أدربه ولا أساعده ولا أنقذه من الشيء اللي هو طلع فيه بالمقابل هو كان أول طفل توحدي عنا بالعائلة يعني أنا كان أول طفل يلتقي بحياة يلتقي بحياتي عنده توحد هو كان عبد الملك ساعدت كتير بحثت كتير بصراحة أكثر المراكز كانوا رافضيني حاولت إنه أسجلوا من باب إنه مدفع جلسات بالتقسيط رفضوا إنه لا إنه سعر كل جلسة مع بعضها تندفع هالشي كتير أثر على نفسيتي وعلى نفسية ابني. These are patients who need these treatments because they can afford it. They can't travel to Turkey or go anywhere else to get their treatment, so they rely on us to give them life-saving treatments and to give them a chance to better survive. تأتي أهمية هذا البرنامج إنه ما في حدا عم يهتم بالمراهقين واليافعين من هاي الطبقة العمرية وعم بيعانوا من كثير مشاكل بتعاطيهم للأمور الحياتية اليومية بالمدرسة مع المدرسين مع رفقاتهم مع زملائهم وبالتالي هم بيجي دور الميسر أو دور الداعم النفسي بتعاطيهم أو طريقة تعاطيهم للمراهقين بهاي المشاكل وتعليم وانتقانيات لحل هاي المشاكل والاعتماد على نفسه وعلى ذاته حبيت أحضر هالتدريب لأنقل بالطريقة الصحيحة لأهل المخيمة طريقة طرق التوعية المجتمعية وتستفيد يستفيد أكبر عدد ممكن من 
طرق التوعيه والتعليمات وهي الشغلات لانه في ناس لحد الان مع انتشار هالمرض هذا وفيروس كورونا ما عندها التوعيه الكامله لتواجه هالوباء هذا الفجر الطبي الله يعطيه العافيه كل شيء موفر عندهم كل شيء موجود ممتاز الحمد لله الله يعطيه العافيه كلهم بيتشكرون والوضع الحمد لله هون كثير كويس والخدمات كويسه والعلاج كويس لما كنت جيدة هون استويت كثير بس فضل الله وفضل كون ارتحت والادويه وشوفكم الحمد لله ارتحت يعني شوفت عينكم يعني الاطفال بدها علاج على طول مرضانه وعلى طول مسخنه يعني وجيت عم الحمد لله رب العالمين عم توفر علينا كثير شغلات يعني الحمد لله رب العالمين الله يجزاك من خير والله يخليكم بشهر رمضان وان شاء الله الله يعود علينا وعليكم بخير ببلادنا بسوريا الحبيبه نعم In the last 10 years SAMS has evolved into the largest medical relief organization in Syria in terms of budget and number of services provided We are now adding another dimension to our work this medical training and medical education We will continue to provide opportunities to ambitious high school graduates to become midwives and nurses. We will open our mental health schools soon and many other specialties in the future. For doctors, we are about to start residency programs. We will graduate intensivists, oncologists, and neurologists. We'll add more specialties in the future. We can do that with your support. and with the academic support we receive from all the members. Next, we will hear a special video message from Dr. Ikram Habbouj, who is the director of SAMS Maternity Hospital in Idlib. السلام عليكم أنا دكتورة أكرام حبوش مديرة مشفى الأمومي بإدلب المشفى حاليا بمقره الجديد مثل ما نكون شايفين هو بمركز مدينة إدلب طبعا مدينة إدلب أكيد كل العالم صار يعرف حجم المعاناة والمأساة اللي عم تعيشها هي أربع مليون بني آدم ميت... حسب ما بعرف يعني مليون ونص شخص منهم عايشين بالخيام بأسوأ ظروف معيشية ممكن حدا يعيشها متوسط دخل الفرد بمعدل اللي عم يعمل يعني اذا كان عن عامل بمعدل 2 دولار بينما اتوقع يمكن تكلفه الحياه اليوميه لا تقل عن 30 40 دولار من ناحيتنا كناس عم تشتغل بالصعيد الانساني والعمل الطبي انا في عندي مشكله حابه اطرحها وحطكم فيها يعني تكونوا على اطلاع مثل نحن مثل هذا المشفى كنا عم نشتغل بمشفى كثير صغير طبعا حسب الامن حسب الامكانيات المتاحه وحسب الامن اللي كانت موجوده فسعه المشفى كانت كثير صغيره فبقسم المخاض عندي انا طبعا كان عندي ست اسره لما بعد الولاده عدد الولادات اللي كنا نولدهم باليوم بمعدل 30 ولاده فكان الوضع كثير كارثه فين كنت تتخيلوا انا يعني على سرير واحد فيني احيانا نحط خمس مريضات باليوم فاحيانا ما نلاقي ولا سرير نحط المريضه نحط لها ننزل على الارض او يعني الوضع كان كثير كثير صعب طبعا بفضل تبرعاتكم بفضل المساعدات اللي انتم تبرعتوا لنا فيها حسنا نحن نجهز هلا هذا البناء اللي هلا رح نمشي فيه ورح تشوفوا رح تشوفوا شيء يعني عن جد مذهل بالنسبه لامكانيات هلا هذا قسم المخاض مثل ما ذكرت لكم سابقا انا كان عندي غرفه وحيده غرفه وحيده هي للتوليد يعني فيها سريرين توليد فاصله بيناتهم بحاجز وعندي غرفتين فقط لما بعد الولادة وكان عندي 30 ولادة يوميا فيعني التوسعة كانت كتير كتير كبيرة وما بقى مضطرين نحط مريضتين مع بعضهم ولا مريضة تمد على الأرض وتقعد ولا هذا الوضع المأساوي اللي كنا عم نشتغل فيه هلأ بالنسبة لقسم الحواضن طبعا نحن في عنا أزمة بقسم الحواضن كتير كبيرة ما بعرف إيشو سبب زيادة الولادات الباكرة يعني الشيء الملاحظ انه عم ترتفع عنا نسبة الولادات الباكرة بشكل كبير وعنا ضغط كبير على قسم الحواضن، قسم العناية المشددة للأطفال اللي بيجوا تحت عمر 28 أسبوع غالبا لا يوجد شاغر، يعني المشفى هذا وقف من يوم أنا اشتغلت مع سامز بال 2015 لهلا ما في ولا شهر 
وقفوا عن الدعم في تبرعاتكم كثير مفيده صحيح المشافي عم تندعم بمنح لفترات محدوده بس الاساس هو الدعم والتبرعات اللي انتم عم تعب... اللي انتم عم تتبرعوا فيها لانه وين ما صار عندنا ثغره باي مكان هن بي... بي... بيسدوا هاي الثغره Thank you, Dr. Ikram, for that special video message. Like she said, it's your donations and your support that makes everything that we do possible. Recently, SAMS has been expanding its medical education initiatives. Dr. Ras, can you please share more about these programs and their impact? Oh, thank you, Dania. Uh, that was really a strong message from Dr. Ikram, one of our heroes inside. Uh, she's an amazing woman, and this is what we tried to, to do. She's one of the few uh, medical facility, female medical facility managers. We were so proud of them all. Well, uh, education and medical, medical education, medical training will be our new dimension. Uh, it all stems from our members' interest. Uh, as, we, uh, as we go into our, our 12 years of, uh, of the conflict, we realize uh, the, the big gap of uh, having uh, qualified healthcare uh, providers. And uh, we tried to approach it from different angles, but during COVID, <laughs> we had something really interesting. It was the positive, positive impact of uh, COVID. If there's a positive impact. We, uh, we got the, uh, the call from our uh, facilities inside our staffs, like, hey, we need to know what this virus, I need to learn on how to manage those patients. As we all know that we had, there's no intensive care specialty in Syria at the time and still uh, that valid now that we, there's no specialized intensivist in Northwest Syria. So we started our own uh, program to build the capacity uh, fast and we did the uh, uh, many, many lectures. It, uh, it was almost week, weekly and we had over to, uh, 200 hours of uh, of lectures mostly focus on patients in the intensive care and a little bit expansion on uh, what to expect in COVID patients. Then we wanted to do, we wanted to do more, and that's mentoring. Uh, at the time we had three facilities in Northwest uh, with a total, bed, a total number of beds of 210. And we later added one uh, facility for COVID in Northeast and then uh, a fifth one for pediatric in Idlib city. So we started daily round and that lasted uh, for uh, a year and a half. So daily round in all those facilities. And uh, we still have that going actually in Northeast and, uh, and in our pediatric care. Uh, and we, we witnessed how the capacity uh, was uh, improving uh, week after week. Now we think in the Northwest, they don't, and adults, they don't, they don't need much of support especially with the, with the much lower case of COVID. So that, that brought us to the idea. It's like we can do training, online training. And this is, this is one thing we're going to be doing. It's, it's going to be in, in intensive care, in neurology. Uh, we did adult oncology. We, we're continuing with that. We're going to start very soon with pediatric oncology, uh, gastroenterology, uh, pediatric intensive care, and many, many other specialties. We'll do formal training according to in a way, our American curriculum and will be done online and in, in, uh, in person with uh, uh, missions going inside Syria from our specialists and our members uh, here. Uh, uh, and so this is for the, for the doctors, but, but years ago, we started the programs for uh, uh, high school graduates. We have one of the best uh, in uh, if not the best uh, midwife programs in, in the whole, whole Syria. So we already graduated 85 midwives. They all working now. Just imagine the impact when, where we, we empower the woman, we give her salary to have a decent living, support her family. Uh, her, uh, and also we, we try to like take care of the most vulnerable population on earth. On earth. Those are the pregnant ladies, and, and the babies. So uh, we, when you think about it, so many dimension uh, that we tackled at the, uh, with this program. We also have a uh, um, uh, nursing school uh, program and we're expanding into uh, m more uh, specialties, especially mental health. We're looking at starting with, uh, with one mental health school and, uh, and ho hopefully in a few years we'll have uh, three of them, two in, in Northwest and one in 
uh, in the Northeast. Uh, we also looking into uh, opening a physical therapy program and uh, we will continue to have support, uh, technical support to our uh, facilities and many other specialties. Our support of education and uh, training is not only inside Syria. We do have programs to support uh, medical students in, uh, in Turkey. We, we do support, I think, 11 medical science students in Lebanon, similar number in Jordan. We are currently supporting three medical uh, doctor to specialize in, in, uh, in Jordan. And we have that support also for the Syrian, Syrian American uh, doctors who's going through residencies here in the US. So this is, will be the dimension uh, beyond medical relief. And uh, it, it, it relies heavily on involvement from our uh, members and their support from the academic, uh, the academic standpoint and also financials because grants don't typically support that kind of program. They don't consider it like life saving. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Termanini. He'll talk a little bit more about fundraising and we'll wrap it up for the evening. As, as you mentioned, as Dr. Ross mentioned, you know, the private funds are extremely important to start projects that are delicate, sometimes on an emergency basis, until we are able to find some grants and funding from governments. Now, in general, around 20% of our budget comes from private donors, our very generous and committed donors. Around 80% comes from governments like the US aid, uh, State Department of the US, uh, French government, German government, Luxembourg, the European Union, uh, ECOFUND, as well as the United Nation. Uh, but this takes a lot of time to prepare a grant proposal and you know, nothing is guaranteed takes lots of work. We do have a grant department that specializes in that. And we also a department for monitoring and reporting and make sure everything is taken care of properly. Um, so sometimes, you know, emergency things happen or a few months ago, 14 medical facilities were threatened to close in Northwestern Syria, not SAMS, but other organizations. The, many of them were pediatric and, and maternity and few of them closed already. So we had to step in and we stepped in on an emergency basis by doing several things. One of the things we did was expanding our neonatal ICU unit in the Idlib city in Ibn Sina Pediatric Hospital, which is a large referral hospital. We added incubators to several pediatric hospitals we have to compensate for the closure and the shortage. Um, we also um, did uh, expanded our surgical hospital in Idlib city to do some internal medicine specialties. So we did that on an emergency basis, and we um, were able to, you know, utilize our uh, precious private donations to do that. Um, and we also talked about the cardiac cath program. So that also is going to be very difficult to find a, a grant at, uh, to start with. But after we get it, we kick in, and then we start the program, and we can show some results. It will be much easier to find a, um, a donor. Um, those are, and then, you know, we, we do have the emergency winter addiction programs. Those are most done by our private donors. Uh, you know, the harsh conditions in the winter with the tents in the uh, uh, internal displaced population in, in Northwestern Syria, as Dr. Ikram alluded to, there's 1.5 million people still live in tents. And there's quite a few of them in Lebanon. Um, and each year, invariably, they get hit with bad weather, with snowstorms and freezing and flooding. Yeah. Have to step in and you know treat those. Uh, those are unexpected, but you know we know it's going to happen. Um, so we utilize the private donations for that. Uh, so it it is very important. And and as Dr. Bashir alluded, uh, this is uh, uh, we have a six percent overall. But probably in most programs, we have way less than that as overhead. The overall majority of the funds that goes for such programs are delivered to the um, fisheries, especially if they come through um, Facebook. You know, Facebook, <laughs> even though it has bad publicity, but when it comes to NGO and the charity donations, it's way better than anything else. Um, and then, you know, we have a little bit of overhead on top of that, but always our overhead has been much lower than any other NGOs. 
ranges less than 6% for the private donors and in general around 6%. Um, we also, you know, do lots of advocacy work for that. You know, we advocate for uh, safety of civilians in general and safety of our healthcare providers and sites here because of the frequent attacks and the loss of life and, and uh, facilities because of that. So it, it, there's lots of aspects to, uh, you know, private funds and, and uh, uh, um, uh, grants, uh, advocacy, uh, they're all connected together. Uh, but the donations from our private donors are very precious. Uh, we use them also for our refugee care, which has been very difficult to get grants for in, this, in Jordan and in Lebanon and in Iraq as well. Thank you. Uh, Basil, if you allow me, it is more important at this point that we rely on, on private funds to continue with the same operation at the, at the, at the, at the same level. Uh, we have those signature program that we cannot stop. We cannot stop our cancer center. The, the cost of cancer patient on average about a thousand dollars. When we treat, we treat usually three kinds of cancer: children, leukemia. We treat uh, breast cancer and colon cancer. We also touch on early uh, lung cancer and other other curable cancers. But these are the, the type of cancer we treat. We cannot cut that program. We are the only, we have two centers actually, and three more infusion centers, two cancer centers and three more infusion centers in, in Northwest. And we cannot stop those. We're the only, we're the only one providing this. The other, uh, the other uh, signature program is the, uh, the uh, stroke unit. We are starting. It's, it's not only the stroke unit, in terms, it's, it's, I mean, it is for three stroke patients, but it is also to train neurologists to handle stroke. We are in later introducing, we are procuring a, a vascular lab to introduce intervention, vascular intervention for stroke and peripheral vascular disease patients. So these, these, this is two examples of the, of the signature program that SAMS uh, does, and we cannot really be, be distinctive without those. Thank you so much, Dr. Amjad, for sharing a little bit more about that. I think it gives us really good perspective into just how important our donation is. I wanted to thank you guys all for joining, uh, joining us this evening and to, you know, to continue to ensure that we can continue delivering these urgently needed medical services. We ask for your support. Please visit our website or like Dr. Basil mentioned, you can donate via Facebook to avoid any credit card fees. I wish you all a meaningful month of Ramadan and a blessed Eid Mubarak.